Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I've got a Ford Transit Connect here that's in for a DPF issue, so it's just pulled up to me here now. Okay, so a bit of the story with this was it came from, was it a Ford garage or? No, no, it's an independent garage. Independent garage. Yeah. And it had a air leak, the same common pipe here. They've replaced the pipe and they've told them to just take the van on a good run and it'll sort itself out. Of course that didn't happen so he's come down to me to now get the DPF sorted out. Just having a quick look here, I can notice there's an oil leak from the seal on there so that's going to need doing as well. Okay so I'm inside the van. Uh, see if I can show you there. Exhaust filter over limit is what it says. Now he's obviously that's what I said. He's been told take it for 100 miles run and that will sort itself out. Uh, the van's done 28,000 miles, so let's plug it in and see what the faults are. Okay, we're going to do a scan of the PCM. Let's go in here. Okay, we're in. Let's read the fault codes. Retrieve. Right, we've got a P2463, P246C00. Particle filter, soot accumulation, restricted performance. So this one means that the van's in limp mode, and this one means that you've got a soot accumulation that is too high to uh, for the van to self-clean. Once you've got that code set up, so what the last guy's done is he's cleared the code, told him to go on a drive. That's not gonna work because within a half a mile down the road that code's gonna come back on. Once that code is set, it, the van knows that the DPF level is now too high and it's not safe for it to do a regen because if it does a regen with that code then what's going to happen is you're likely going to overheat the DPF and damage it so the van won't do it it just won't it won't set off the regen so all of that talk that everyone says hold it at 3000 rpm and drive it down the road and it will clear out now you will hear some people say yeah that worked for me maybe on some older cars yeah, and if on a very very rare circumstances, if you clear the code, yeah, you, you, if, you know it, it is possible, but 99% of cars that will not work on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the DPF, uh, and then we can reset the, the. Even if I clean the DPF on this, this is one thing more I'll mention. Yeah, well, let's read the DPF pressure in live data stream. There it is, inlet pressure, must have already ticked it. Put it down to a more accurate sort of reading there. So we've got sort of 30 to 40 fluctuations in the pressure. That is normal on these, they all behave like that. So even if I get that pressure down to one or two millibars, five millibars, you, and I clear the code, the code will come back. To reset the fault code now with this, the DPF is locked, so what I need to do is after it's been cleaned, I need to reset the DPF values using special functions. So we'll go through it now. Okay, so if we look down here, we've got the DPF pressure sensor. I can touch it right there, that's the, the clip for it. Can't really get the camera down there to see, but that's where the pressure sensor is. Okay, so I've disconnected the hose down there and I've connected up my DPF gun here. Got the DPF cleaning fluid in this and it's set to 130 psi on the compressor there. And we just squeeze the trigger, get all of the fluid in there. Okay, so we've got the fluid in now. What I'm going to do is start the vehicle back up now. Okay, now the fluid's in, we've got the engine running. Gonna hold the vehicle up to 3000 RPM. And we'll keep an eye on the DPF pressure there. So I've got that on the chart so we can see see that it's coming down. I think we're yeah, we're slightly running away a little bit with the revs, let's just try and keep that around 3000. It's easy, the revs on these just get carried away, it's hard to keep them in the one, one spot. You can 
feel them coming up again. A little bit. So we've got the pressure under 100 now. Let's let that idle down now. See where we are. Sort of 8 to... Was that 8 to 16, 17 millibars? So now we have the DPF at a good enough pressure to reset it. First, we'll just give it a few, a few spikes and revs. You should see some smoke coming from the rear of the van there. I'm going to switch the engine off and ignition on. So just make sure your dash lights are on like that. And I'm going to go to special functions. Let's have a look. We need to find the to reset the diesel particulate filter values. So we've got the matter sensor there, pressure sensor values. Right here. Okay, so that's in progress now. Turn the ignition off. Wait for that to power down, and the interior light should go off once that's powered down. Okay, so that's complete. So now that that's complete, we can now go in and clear the fault codes. Like I said before, if we declare the fault codes drive at a mile up the road, these faults would come back. Okay, we need to switch the ignition on. Forgot about that. Let's try that again. Okay, now read the fault codes. And we should have zero codes in the system. So now if we cycle off the ignition and then start it back up, we should have no more warnings now. Apart from the bonnet open. Okay, so that's it, DPF's cleaned, code to reset, and this van can now make its way home, and I'll see you on our next video.